think of ourselves as the most powerful beings in the universe, it's unsettling to discover that we're wrong. Time has come to see the world as it is. Can we pull back the veil of static and reach into the source of all being? Behind this curtain, this random pattern generator, you will be responsible for an escalation that will destroy everything. Welcome to Chaos Shamanism. I am the clairsentient psychonaut. And this episode, uh, I wanted to talk about some strange things that went down shortly after the events I described in the last episode. First of all, there was a rectangular table at the foot of my bed, which had my heavy drawing board on it, and a stack of hefty instructional drawing books. One morning, I was awoken by a huge crashing sound. I jumped out of bed thinking that my whole computer had fallen off my desk and onto the floor, but when I checked it, it was still there. I searched the room for the source of the cacophony, and saw that the rectangular table with the books and drawing board on it had been flipped over. One may think, oh, you must have simply kicked the table in your sleep and were merely awoken by the sound of it falling, but no. First of all, my feet were about two feet away from the table when I was in bed and could not have reached it. Secondly, the table had not fallen normally. If it had fallen simply due to it being struck and then tipping over, based on its shape and accompanying weight distribution, it would have fallen along the axis of its width, but it did not. Confoundingly, it had fallen along its length. Also, it didn't simply fall onto its side. It was completely face down, with the drawing board and the books directly under it. It was as if someone had put one hand on top of the books and the other under the table, and proceeded to flip it over face down. After much thought and study, I determined that that was the only way it could have wound up the way it did, yet no one else was in my apartment and the door was closed and locked. Now, it could not have been me flipping it over while I was sleepwalking, since I was awoken by the sound of it being flipped over while I was still lying in bed. I remember recounting this event to a very atheistic friend of mine, and his only response was, You're crazy. You're just crazy. That sort of thing is impossible. You're crazy. I fail to see to this day how any mental illness could have caused me to flip a table over from a distance while sleeping. I also fail to see why so many people who refer to themselves simply as atheists absolutely will not accept even the possibility that anomalous phenomenon ever occurs. What the hell does a belief in no God have to do with unusual events? These people should call themselves materialist fundamentalists, if anything. What the hell in God's name is going down here? 5th February, 1980, Weekly World News, USA. Police in Roanoke, Virginia, arrested a man named Withheld for standing on a roof naked, howling and barking like a dog. March, 1905, Occult Review, England. Account of a man in Wales seen turning into a wolf. The witness was Mrs. Mary Jones, revivalist preacher. Same magazine, same article. Another man in Wales, same year, seen turning into a wolf. This time there were two witnesses. Comte Rendis, 1887. An object that fell from the sky on June 20th that year in Tarbes, France. It was cut and shaped as if by intelligence and covered with ice. 10th September, 1910, Scientific American. A worked stone fell from the sky into the Yaqui Valley of Mexico. The author, Charles Holder, and a major Burnham, examined it and agreed it had two concentric circles inscribed on it and some characters that Holder thought were Mayan. The stone was eight feet long. Flammarion, The Atmosphere, page 34. A block of ice weighing four and a half pounds fell in Spain, June 1829. Another block of ice weighing 11 pounds fell in France, October 1844. Mass of ice three feet by three feet fell in Hungary, May 1802. When these abnormal blocks of ice fall these days, as they do, we shall see some cases later, the explanation is that they fell off the wings of an airplane But there were no airplanes in 1802 to 1844. Monthly Weather Review, 32-365. On November 12th, 13th, and 14th, 1902, it rained mud in Australia. There was a haze all the way to the Philippines and as far as Hong Kong. Space-time transients and unusual events. By Pressinger and Lafreniere. Page 35. July, 1841, Lebanon, Tennessee. Fall of fleshy material. August, 1841, Spring Creek, Tennessee. Fall of flesh. March 1846, Shanghai, China, fall of hair and flesh. 1850, Virginia, fall of several hundred pounds of flesh. Same source, page 34, July 1841, fall of fish, frogs, and ice in Derby, England. December 1857, fall of lizards in Montreal, Quebec. August 1870, another fall of lizards, this time in Sacramento, California. It was a public service announcement designed to scare the shit out of About a month later, I got up one morning to find the same table which had been flipped over absolutely flattened, just smashed into splinters. The thick and heavy drawing board on top of it was broken in two. My initial suspicion 
was that it must have been myself sleepwalking, something which I am not known to do at all, I might add. I must have fallen on the table while wandering around. However, the more I thought about it and examined the table's remains, I determined that this was impossible. Not only was I not sore or bruised at all, I would have, have to have been, considering the level of destruction visited upon the poor table, but there is no way that my weight could have caused such damage. I tried to break the two remaining halves of the drawing board by laying them diagonally on an incline and stomping on them with all my weight. You know, the way you can break someone's leg or crack a stick in half. But I couldn't even crack them. Now, due to basic physical laws, these remaining halves would be much easier to break in half than the whole drawing board. Yet I could not break them. Even trying to bash them in half with a hammer didn't work. The only way that the table and drawing board could have been broken to that degree is if something extremely heavy had been dropped on them. The only thing in my apartment that I could imagine being heavy enough to do that was a large television I had. I imagine, though, that a scenario involving me sleepwalking, picking up a very large television which was too heavy and bulky to be moved by a single person, somehow managing a sort of superhuman sleepwalking strength to be able to carry the damn thing into my bedroom, dropping it on the table, picking it up again, and carrying it back to its spot in the other room would, in itself, be a paranormal event. It was abducted by aliens earlier this afternoon. That little girl got lost under the bed and she went into an alternate dimension. This article was written by Arjun Walia and is called Signs Proves That Human Consciousness and Our Material World Are Intertwined. It was written on March 8th, 2014. I want to make it clear that my intention of presenting this information is to demonstrate that thoughts, intentions, prayer, and other units of consciousness can directly influence our physical material world. Consciousness can be a big factor in creating change on the planet. Sending thoughts of love, healing intent, prayer, good intention, and more can have a powerful influence on what you are directing those feelings towards. For quite some time now, physicists have been exploring the relationship between human consciousness and its relationship to the structure of matter. Previously, it was believed that a Newtonian material universe was the foundation of our physical material reality. This all changed when scientists began to recognize that everything in the universe is made out of energy. Quantum physicists discovered that physical atoms are made up of vortices of energy that are constantly spinning and vibrating. Matter, at its tiniest observable level, is energy, and human consciousness is connected to it. Human consciousness can influence its behavior and even restructure it. Here's a quote from Niels Bohr. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. Here's a quote from Paramahamsa Tiwari. The hypothesis of modern science starts from matter as the basic reality, considering space to be an extension of the void. The phenomenon of creation of stable cosmic matter, therefore, goes beyond the scope of present science. The theory also neither pinpoints the source of cosmic energy that resides in the structure of matter, nor can it explain the cause of material properties that are experienced with the behavior of matter. These are, in brief, the limitations of modern scientific theories at the most basic level of the physical phenomena of nature. When a scientific theory cannot cope with the question of the very origin of the universal matter and energy, how could it ever grasp and explain the phenomenon of consciousness which is evident in living beings? End quote. The revelation that the universe is not an assembly of physical parts, but instead comes from an entanglement of immaterial energy waves, stems from the work of Albert Einstein, Max Planck, and Werner Heisenberg, amongst others. The quantum double slit experiment is a great example of how consciousness and our physical material world are intertwined. One potential revelation of this experience is that the observer creates the reality. A paper published in the peer-reviewed journal Physics Essays explains how this experiment has been used multiple times to explore the role of consciousness in shaping the nature of physical reality. In this experiment, a double-slit optical system was used to test the possible role of consciousness in the collapse of the quantum wave function. The ratio of the interference pattern's double-slit spectral power to its single-slit spectral power was predicted to decrease when attention was focused toward the double-slit as compared to away from it. The study found that factors associated with consciousness significantly correlated in predicted ways with perturbations in the double-slit interference pattern. Here's a quote from R.C. Henry from The Mental Universe. Nature, 436, colon, 29, comma, 2005. Observation not only disturbs what has to be measured, they produce it. We compel the electron to assume a definite position. We ourselves produce the results of the measurement. A fundamental conclusion of the new physics also acknowledges that the observer creates the reality. As observers, we are personally involved with the creation of our own reality. Physicists are being forced to admit that the universe is a mental construction. Pioneering physicist Sir James Jeans wrote, the stream of knowledge is heading toward a non-mechanical reality. The universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. Mind no longer appears to be an accidental intruder into the realm of matter. We ought rather hail it as the creator and governor of the realm of matter. Get over it and accept the inarguable conclusion. The universe is immaterial, dash mental, and spiritual.
Psychokinesis, also known as PK, encompasses the possible influence of human consciousness on the behavior of physical or biological systems or processes, and comprises several loosely related classes of effect characterized by different scales of energy, forms of manifestation, replicability, and statistical behavior. In 2004, a United States Air Force Research Project declassified a paper titled Teleportation Physics Study, authored by Eric Davis, Ph.D., showing that psychokinesis and other parapsychological phenomena have been subject to rigorous research and documentation by several researchers and institutions. One particular example was the work of professional aerospace engineer Jack Houck, along with Army Colonel J.B. Alexander. They were responsible for holding a number of PK sessions where attendees were taught the PK induction process and how to initiate their own PK events using various metal specimens like forks and spoons. Individuals were able to completely bend or contort their metal specimens with no physical force being applied whatsoever. These events were held for government science advisors and senior military officials. They took place at the Pentagon, at officers and scientists' homes, and at U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Command locations all over the world. Commanding generals, colonels, and more were always in attendance. What was witnessed by all was spontaneous deformation of metal specimens, which caused a great deal of excitement amongst those present. The Global Consciousness Experiment is an international multidisciplinary project between multiple scientists and engineers. It originates from Princeton University in conjunction with the Institute of Noetic Sciences. It collects data constantly from a worldwide network of physical random number generators located all over the planet. The data is transmitted to a home base, which now has more than 15 years of data stored in it. Quoting, Our purpose is to examine subtle correlations that may reflect the presence and activity of consciousness in the world. We hypothesize that there will be structure in what should be random data associated with major global events that engage our minds and hearts. RNGs are systems created by Princeton researchers that are sensitive to and respond to the intentions of individuals, in other words, the influence of consciousness. They also respond to marked shifts in attention occurring in their environment. Peaks of order are commonly recorded during moments of shared attention and emotions. RNGs also responded and had the largest effects ever recorded by the Global Consciousness Project during major world events like 9-11. Other large recordings have occurred on presidential inauguration, tsunamis, and the deaths of public figures. These findings stirred deep questions about the nature of consciousness and its connection to our physical material reality. Remote viewing is the ability of individuals to describe remote geographical locations up to several hundred thousand kilometers away. This concept has been proven, demonstrated, and documented a number of times. In 1995, the CIA declassified and approved the release of documents revealing its involvement in the program that lasted for more than 25 years. Ingo Swan, one participant in this experiment, was able to view specific rings around Jupiter before NASA was about to take pictures of it with their Pioneer 10 craft. This was documented in the research. Individuals were also able to view objects and people in separate rooms that were completely blocked off from their present physical location. The fact that some have the capability to project their consciousness elsewhere from their present physical location is quite amazing. These projects occurred for decades, while some of the mainstream world continue to view them as pseudoscience. The Department of Defense takes them extremely seriously and keeps them extremely secret. This program was part of a program called Stargate and was unexpectedly shut down. It's been well documented that we can change our biology simply by what we believe to be true. The placebo effect is defined as the measurable, observable, or felt improvement in health or behavior not attributable to a medication or invasive treatment that has been administered. It suggests that one can treat various ailments by using the mind to heal. Many studies have shown that the placebo effect, the power of consciousness, is real and highly effective. A Baylor School of Medicine study published in 2002 in the New England Journal of Medicine looked at surgery for patients with severe and debilitating knee pain. Many surgeons know there is no placebo effect in surgery, or so most of them believe. The patients were divided into three groups. The surgeon shaved the damaged cartilage in the knee of one group, for the second group, they flushed out the knee joint, removing all of the material believed to be causing inflammation. Both of these processes are the standard surgeries people who have severe arthritic knees must undergo. The third group received a quote-unquote fake surgery. The patients were only sedated and tricked into thinking that they had received the knee surgery. Doctors made the incisions and splashed salt water on the knee as they would in normal surgery, then sewed up the incisions like the real thing. All three groups went through the same rehab process, and the results were astonishing. The placebo group improved just as much as the other two groups who had surgery. A report by the United States Department of Health and Human Services in 1999 has also underscored the efficacy of the placebo effect, this time with treating depression. The report discovered that half of severely depressed patients taking drugs improved compared to the 32% taking a placebo. That thin margin hardly seems worth the many dangers and side effects associated with antidepressant use.
A 2002 article published in the American Psychological Association's Prevention and Treatment by University of Connecticut psychology professor Irving Kirsch, titled The Emperor's New Drugs, made some more shocking discoveries. He found that 80% of the effect of antidepressants, as measured in clinical trials, could be attributed to the placebo effect. This professor even had to file a Freedom of Information Act request to get information on the clinical trials of the top antidepressants. A paper published in the People's Republic of China in September 1981 in the journal Zeran Zahi, Nature Journal, titled Some Experiments on the Transfer of Objects Performed by Unusual Abilities of the Human Body, Shu Huang, 1981, reported that gifted children were able to cause the teleportation of small physical objects from one place to another. Objects included watches, horseflies, other insects, radio microtransmitters, photosensitive paper, and more. The participants never touched the objects beforehand. The experiments were done under both blind and double-blind conditions, and the researchers involved came from various colleges and sectors of the Department of Defense. This is an exceptional case because it was deemed necessary that an unclassified intelligence information report be prepared for public viewing. More research was done by the Aerospace Medicine Engineering Institute in Beijing in July of 1990. It was published in the Chinese Journal of Somatic Science, Kongzi, 1990, Xingen, 1990, Banghui, 1990. The study reported several experiments involving high-speed photography videotaping, which was able to capture the transfer of test specimens like nuts, matches, nails, pills, and more through the walls of sealed paper envelopes, sealed glass bottles and tubes, sealed plastic film canisters, and more, without the walls of any of these containers being breached. All these experiments reported using gifted children and adults to cause the teleportation of various materials. There are numerous studies documenting how consciousness and our physical material reality are intertwined in so many different ways, with many different examples, like the ones listed above. RoyalSocietyPublishing.org Quantum Physics in Neuroscience and Psychology A Neurophysical Model of Mind-Brain Interaction Jeffrey M. Schwartz, Henry P. Stapp, Mario Beauregard Posted June 29, 2005 Neuropsychological research on the neural basis of behavior generally posits that brain mechanisms will ultimately suffice to explain all, all psychologically described phenomena. This assumption stems from the idea that the brain is made up entirely of material particles and fields, and that all causal mechanisms relevant to neuroscience can therefore be formulated solely in terms of properties of these elements. Thus, terms having intrinsic, mentalistic, and or experiential content, in other words, feeling, knowing, and effort, are not included as primary causal factors. This theoretical restriction is motivated primarily by ideas about the natural world that have been known to be fundamentally incorrect for more than three quarters of a century. Contemporary basic physical theory differs profoundly from classic physics on the important matter of how the consciousness of human agents enters into the structure of empirical phenomena. The new principles contradict the older idea that local mechanical processes alone can account for the structure of all observed empirical data. Contemporary physical theory brings directly and irreducibly into the overall causal structure certain psychologically described choices made by human agents about how they will act. This key development in basic physical theory is applicable to neuroscience, and it provides neuroscientists and psychologists with an alternative conceptual framework for describing neural processes. Indeed, owing to certain structural features of ion channels critical to synaptic function, contemporary physical theory must in principle be used when analyzing human brain dynamics. The new framework, unlike its classic physics-based predecessor, is erected directly upon and is compatible with the prevailing principles of physics. It is able to represent more adequately than classic concepts the neuroplastic mechanisms relevant to the growing number of empirical studies of the capacity of directed attention and mental effort to systematically alter brain function. DailyGrail.com Scientific research suggests we unconsciously react to events up to 10 seconds before they happen. Posted by Greg on March 4th, 2014. Can your brain detect events before they even occur? That was the stunning conclusion of a 2012 meta-analysis of experiments from seven independent laboratories over the last 35 years, which found that the human body can apparently detect randomly delivered stimuli occurring one to 10 seconds in the future. Mossbridge, Trasoli, and Utz, 2012. In the studies, physiological readings were taken as participants were subjected to unpredictable events designed to activate the sympathetic nervous system, for example showing provocative imagery, as well as neutral events that did not activate the nervous system. 
These readings show that the nervous system aligned with the nature of the event, activated slash non-activated, and what's more, the magnitude of the pre-event response corresponded with the magnitude of the post-event response. In a more recent paper, researchers have critically analyzed these findings, considering possible mundane explanations for the results and also the implications of the results if they truly do point to a paradigm-shaking discovery. Quoting, the key observation in these studies is that human physiology appears to be able to distinguish between unpre unpredictable dichotomous future stimuli, such as emotional versus neutral images, or sound versus silence. This phenomenon has been called presentiment, as in feeling the future. In this paper, we call it predictive anticipatory activity, or PAA. The phenomenon is predictive because it can distinguish between upcoming stimuli, it is anticipatory because the physiological changes occur before a future event, and it is an activity because it involves changes in the cardiopulmonary, skin, and or nervous systems. End quote. They found that neither questionable research practices or biases nor physiological artifacts seem to be able to explain PAA, and that the evidence indicates that there is a temporal mirroring between pre- and post-event physiological effects or events so that the nature of the post-event physiological response is correlated with the characteristics of the PAA for that event. The authors of the paper also point out fascinating aspects of the research, such as the fact that PAA is an unconscious phenomenon that appears to resemble precognition, consciously knowing something is going to happen before it does, but PAA specifically refers to unconscious physiological reactions as opposed to conscious premonitions. The implication is that there must be a necessity for PAA to remain non-conscious most of the time, given that if some part of our nervous system can obtain information about events seconds in the future, wouldn't we have evolved to make this information conscious? Nevertheless, as we always note here at the Grail, this is science at the edge, so caveat lector. The authors of the recent paper, too, urge caution until more extensive research is undertaken. Quote, until there is a gold standard experiment that is replicated across laboratories using exactly the same experimental procedure, physiological measures, and statistical analysis, they note, there remains the possibility that multiple analysis could influence the body of evidence supporting PAA. They recommend that all researchers investigating the topic register their experiments in advance at any of several registries designed for experiments examining exceptional experiences. Science can explain everything, if we look hard enough. Shut up, science bitch! Around the same time as the smashed table event, I woke up on my side in bed to find that there was something very heavy on top of me, pushing me down into the bed. I turned my head and saw a very confounding humanoid figure lying on top of me. It looked as if one of the predators from the movies of the same name was cloaked and standing under a waterfall. For those unfamiliar with the predator reference, Imagine a basic human form, but it is translucent and composed of a kind of warbling and rippling white energy. When I turned my head far enough to look into its excuse for a face, I was struck with terror in a peculiar form of non-physical agony. Where a normal humanoid's face would be, there was a deafening vortex, which was looking very deeply into my own eyes, violently and cruelly sucking the life energy out of me. Now, it's a bit difficult to describe this fellow. The only way that I can describe its horrible vortex face is to say that it was unbearably loud, even though it made no sound. It vampirized the life out of me with a vicious intensity that chills me to this day. Another strange aspect of this encounter was the fact that I was somehow very familiar with the being somehow. For some reason, part of my mind was like, oh, it's you. I was eventually able to break free from it and jumped up out of bed to find the thing gone. Now, I know what the pat skeptical explanation for this would be, that I was experiencing the combination of sleep paralysis and hypnagogic hallucinations. Well, as someone who is, and was, very familiar with both sleep paralysis and hypnagogic hallucinations, I can assure you that this was something entirely different. Sleep paralysis involves an inability to move your body at all, but in this situation, it wasn't that I couldn't move, I was actually being physically held down by the thing. I had learned a while ago how to trigger hypnagogic hallucinations, which look like little movies being played in front of your closed eyes. And this was something completely different. This thing was in the room with me, and I could feel its weight and touch. A couple of days later, I dozed off and soon woke up to find the same attacker now digging into my throat with its fingers. It felt like it was trying to tear the life out of my neck. Once again, I felt a strange familiarity with the thing before I was able to force it off of myself. Now, I've had one previous experience with this sort of thing before, which is called hagging phenomenon by many. I was in a hotel room with my parents and had a dream where I was lying on the ground in the middle of a circle of people in occult robes reciting some kind of chant. The chant increased in horrifying intensity until I bolted awake. I tried to get up, but there was a heavy force pushing down on my chest, and I could feel hands wrapped around my throat, trying to strangle me. 
I finally broke free, jumping out of bed and gasping for air. All right, well, uh, stay tuned for the next episode where things look a bit brighter and a possible miracle occurs. Not only is he, like, ruining my life, but with all this God shit that he's into, he could be ruining my afterlife. Yes. It's a sort of interdimensional vagina that somehow appears I can interact with it. Fabric of the entire universe to be torn apart. I know my mind is changing. I'm already too far.